All right, uh, so Mike now has 10 minutes, it was a strict 10 minutes, and I'll point out that he did not fall asleep once during this entire day, right? This, uh, now, I have not conferred with the Berkeley people, but I think I hold the record, because he only fell asleep once during my thesis defense. It's usually three times. Uh, so this is, so I've learned now, if you want him not to fall asleep, just talk about him all day, right? So, <laughs> all right. You, Mike, you have 10 minutes. You have the floor. Yep, yep, slide. And as usual, the microphone is too low. <laughs> well, I want to thank all of you for coming. I'm just really moved. And uh, I especially want to thank uh, whoever put up all the money to make, to make all the food happen. And uh, I'm sure Andy had nothing to do with it. <laughs> And, but I, I'm, I'm really moved. And, and it was mentioned at the beginning, Jerry Held said, we were lucky that we happened to you know, choose Unix because Ingress wouldn't have been anything without that piece of luck. So I just want to go through a few vignettes in my life that were really significant but weren't planned. So, so the first one was, uh, you know, I graduated from college in 1965, and that was exactly the year the Vietnam War is going full blast, and the draft still exists. So my choices uh, when I graduated from college was uh, go to Vietnam, go to graduate school, go to Canada, or go to jail. So it doesn't, you don't have to be very smart to figure out which one I chose. But I, I had no interest in going to graduate school when, when I uh, got out of college, uh, there was a TV show called Route 66, which those of you who were pretty old may remember. It's about two guys who drive around in a Corvette and have all kinds of interesting things happen to them. So I wanted to figure out what to do with my life by doing the Route 66 thing, and that wasn't available. So I sat out the war in graduate school and I didn't want to be there. I would never have gone to graduate school. I'd have never been here. Uh, that was truly significant and had nothing to do. And the only thing it had to do with was Richard Nixon. <laughs> the second, second thing that was really significant was uh, fast forward to 1971. And so I'm an assistant professor at Berkeley. And as people have said, you have five or six years to get famous at whatever. And so the clock is running. And uh, my, as people have mentioned, my PhD thesis is truly ridiculous. <laughs> and it was just completely evident that, that, that there were no two or three papers to come out of doing more of the same stuff. So, so I had no way of leveraging my PhD thesis. Uh, you know, largely thanks to my uh, PhD th thesis advisor. Uh, what's more, I was, I was a terrible writer. And so you have to immediately start writing papers for, for publication, doing grant proposals. And so the first two years were just really painful at, at trying to figure out how to write. So I had to choose a new area to do something in and learn how to write. And as Jenny Dugan told me recently, even without these problems, an assistant professor is basically like being a graduate school student and having to teach. So I hated being an assistant professor. I absolutely hated it. And the thing that was monumentally significant was Gene Wong, uh, who, who you heard from, uh, whose picture you saw a few minutes ago, telling me, let's, let's start doing this data by database stuff. It was all him, and that was such a lucky accident. And so he took me under his wing, and we started doing Ingress. Now, it didn't bother either of us that we had no database experience, no system software experience, no programming experience. Well, you know, here, it didn't bother us that we knew nothing about the mountain we were going to try and climb. 
And I think all of the system R and Ingress people, you know, this was a totally green field. And, and I think if I had any idea how hard it was to build a database system, I don't think I ever would have started. But I think, you know, that the, the takeaway is that was a really fortuitous thing that happened. And it didn't occur to us to think we couldn't do it. And I think that is the same true for the system R folks. So that was just truly significant and was a complete accident. Uh, the third thing that I think is, was really significant was, uh, as has been mentioned this morning, there were a whole bunch of relational database projects at the time. And almost all of the academic ones would get a little bit of stuff working and then stop. And about 1975, uh, we decided that we were going to make Ingress really work. So, we, you know, we didn't, I didn't realize this at the time, but you put in the first 90% of the effort and, and you get 90% of the way there. And then you put in the next 90% of the effort to get the, the remaining 10%. And we continued to make the system really work. And I think that uh, Jerry Held and Eric Allman and Peter Krebs, the people you mentioned this morning, did all the heavy lifting. And I think that was just, I don't know, hardly anybody in, in academia ever puts in the remaining 90%. And I have no idea why we did it. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't a deliberate, there was nothing deliberate about it. Uh, you know, we just, for some reason, kept going. And I think the, the fourth thing that was, I think, really significant was about 1978, uh, it, it, we, Ingress was very popular in universities because of the acceptance of Unix. And so uh, Arizona State University was considering putting their student records database up on Ingress in 1978, all 40,000 students worth. And they could get over, they had to run an, an unsupported operating system from AT&T. They could get over, they had to run an unsupported database system from these guys at Berkeley. But the project went down in flames when they realized that there was no COBOL available for Unix, and they were a COBOL shop. So it just became really clear that if we we're going to have an impact, unsupported operating system, unsupported database system, and no commercial environment were just deadly. So we had to start a company, and you know we, we had to move it out of the university. And I, of course, at the time, had no idea how to do this. So you just assume that you can figure it out and start doing it. And I think the, the secret of success is to just not not realize that things are hard. And so, so we managed to start Ingress Corporation. And the whole model that uh, has been mentioned that every other company I've ever done has been the same model. Because once you say, boy, this stuff works, you can do this more than once, that sort of everything else sort of followed. And so I think the, the takeaway is, Ne never think something's hard because everything is always hard, and you just you just do it, and and luck has a lot to do with it, and uh, you know, and I think t you know the issue of luck is you may have to tee up more than one ball, and sooner or later you're going to get lucky. So uh, I feel just incredibly blessed. The database management has turned out to be really important. Uh, it wasn't anything I ever chose. And that I am where I am because I would not have chosen it. And so uh, uh, somebody mentioned that, that one thing I've said is that you know, you're driving down the freeway and you see an opportunity to shift left into a faster lane. You know, you can either choose to do it or not. And at that moment, shift left and see what happens. So thank you very much for coming.